Hello and welcome back. In our lecture number 4 of kinesiology, we will study what the orthokinematics is. Some important terminologies about the types of orthokinematic motion, the concave convex rule and about the orthokinematic forces. Let's start with the orthokinematics. What is orthokinematics? As in osteokinematics, we studied about the movement of the bones at a joint. And during that movement, what is happening at a joint surface is known as the orthokinematics. Is the study of the joint surface movement in which we see the relationship of the joint surfaces movement. During orthokinematic motion, adjoining joint surfaces move on each other during osteokinematic motion. Example, if the shoulder joint is flexing, then the rolling or the sliding movement is occurring at the level of the joint surfaces to improve the movement or to gain the complete range of motion. Some important terminologies for accessory motion. First of all, we should know about what the accessory motion is. These are the necessary movements within the joint and surrounding tissue to gain normal range of motion. There are two types of accessory motions. One is the component movement and the second one is the joint play. The component movement is an active movement but is not under voluntary control. For example, the tibia rotate during the knee extension or during the shoulder flexion the shoulder girdle rotates upward and in the joint play these are the passive movement occurring at the level of the joint surface they are performed passively by applying an external force and are not under voluntary control the example of the joint play movements are the roll, spin and glide that we are going to study in the orthokinematics in detail. Both the component movements and joint movements are very important for the joint mobilization which is one of the physical therapy techniques used to improve the joint mobility or decrease the pain. Now the types of orthokinematics motion. There are three types of orthokinematic motion, roll, glide and spin that are either translatory or rotatory movements. In the rolling movement, one of the surface roll on the other surface in which a new point on each surface come in contact with each other throughout the movement. For example, if you roll a ball on a floor, the new point on a ball will come in contact with the new point on the floor. Same happen in the bone. And in the glide motion, the same point on one surface come in contact with the new point on the other surface. It is basically a parallel movement. If you are moving a box on a floor, a same point on the box will come in contact with the different points on the floor. Same happen in the glide of one bone on the other bone. And in the spin movement, the same point on each surface come in contact with each other throughout the movement. Example, example is the top spinner spinning on the table either roll, glide or spin. What will occur at the joint surface 
expertly depends on the shape of the bone. Most joint movements involve a combination of all these three movements, as the joint surfaces are of not fixed shape. Now, in the concavo con convex rule, that is very important, especially in the joint mobilization. The force you are applying or the direction of the force you are applying is totally depend on this rule. There are two bony partners. One is concave and the other is convex. In this rule, we will study which one is stable and which one is moving. If the concave bony partner is stable or fixed and the moving one is the convex, then at the joint surface level, the glide will occur in the opposite direction to the movement of the bone. And if the convex surface is stable and the concave one is moving, then the movement of the glide will be in the direction of the movement of the bone. Either a concave surface is moving or a convex surface is moving. In both the condition, roll will always occur in the same direction. So, so the main concern is all about the gliding movement. We will summarize it. If the convex surface is moving, then the glide will occur in the opposite direction and vice versa. And in the joint mobilization, we will try to explain it with an example. During joint mobilization, when a therapist is applying a gliding force, he will see which pony partner is moving. In case of a shoulder joint, the humerus head is convex, fitting into a concave glenoid cavity. And during movement, the glenoid cavity or the concave bony partner remains fixed, while the convex bony partner or the humerus head moves. So in this condition, during flexion, the glide will apply in the backward direction and during extension the glide will be in the anterior direction and for the concave bony partner movement in the case of metacarpophalangeal joint movement the metacarpal head is convex in shape while the moving phalangeal end is concave so if your finger is moving in flexion then the glide will occur in the same direction. Now here comes some accessory motion forces. These include traction, compression, shear, bending and rotation. Under the traction force, bone ends move apart from each other. Always remember traction must occur perpendicular to the joint line of the concave bony partner. Pulling bones apart is not the traction, but pulling bones apart perpendicular to the joint line of concave bony partner is a traction. And during compression, the two bony ends move toward each other. While the compression occurs during weight bearing, that is important for stability and also helps in the movement of the synovial fluid to maintain the cartilage health. In shear force, both the pony ends move parallel to each other but in opposite direction. While in bending force, there is a combination of traction and compression. On one end, Compression is occurring while on the other side traction is happening. Under the action of the rotational force, a twisting motion occurs. If you like my video, 
then give it a thumb up, comment and share. And for more video, subscribe to my channel. Thank you.